Woohoo! Welcome back to Big Her the Nerd. As today we bring you another famous tactic rebuild. This time it is the Invincibles tactic. The Arsenal Invincibles tactic that was used during that Invincible season, the 03 04 season. That led. It was emphatic when Omri was at his best with Burkamp, Lundberg, Vieira, the big, big players. We look to recreate that tactic within Football Manager. And as you would have seen if you've seen the series, play it through with Arsenal and try and win what we can in just two seasons. So what we did was this, starting with the tactic. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll give you a slight breakdown of how the tactic worked um, and, and how they played in that 03 04 season. So essentially, the whole um, the whole premise was that they were strong and secure at the back with a sweeper keeper. Uh, they held the line so that if teams came at them, it was it was meant to be built on, on an offside rule basis that they kept the line, held the line, the defenders there were to defend, and once they had the ball, they then sprung the attack quickly. They had the midfield two who played more defensively, working to link up the play between defence and attack. Um, so it was kind of when they were defending, they were defending as a six. And when they were attacking, they were attacking as a six. So these two, it was pivotal to have these two roles in it. At the time of Arsenal playing, uh, they played with more of a two-striker system or possibly a, a sort of an asymmetric. Burkamp in this role where he dropped further deeper to pick up the ball. And Omri in this role where he was given free reign across the top of the pitch. You then had uh, Lundberg out on the right and uh, Robert Perez out on the left with Vieira and Gilberto in the middle. Gilberto doing the more defensive work. And Vieira as that more traditional box-to-box -box midfielder. So we had to look to try and recreate that with the team that we had. Bring in some players to, to fill the, the roles where they were missing. Central midfield is definitely now they were missing. And see if we could win anything with Arsenal. Um, so we did it over two seasons. Before we get into the results, let me just go through the tactic and how we played then. And, uh, and show you... The, the setup. So you can see we played with a 4-2-3-1. That was really because it worked for the players that we had. Um, it could have been a 4-4-2 we played. We did play with two strike or try to play with two strikers. We did play with kind of asymmetric um, at a certain point of the season. Depending on who you have will depend on how these top two roles work. Um, again, with your wide men as well. You could play him as uh, attacking roles but from a flat 4-4-2 or as they are now in the AML and AMR roles. If we look at team instructions, we played on control. We played structured, so the teams did their specific jobs. So the defence did the defending, the midfield did the shutting in between, and the attack did the attack. We didn't want defenders getting forward, we didn't want attackers coming back. Everyone had their role to play, and everyone played it perfectly. That's the idea of that Invincibles, that Arsene Wenger tactic, was that everybody did their job very well, which led to a, very, a team that worked like clockwork. Everyone knew exactly what they were doing. Um, which we tried to create to some success. We played on a higher tempo to get at them, uh, at the players. We played very wide to use the full width of the pitch. We played with a higher, slightly higher line and offside trap because that is key for that defensive line to work, to play, to push the play and try and catch your opposition team offline with a very strong defensive line. We had to close down on sometimes. Um, we tweaked that in the individual player instructions, as you'll see later on. We had used tighter marking on, so those defenders were marking up where necessary. And the midfield too, we're obviously doing a bit more as well. Get stuck in is optional. We had it on for some games, off for other games. It does cause us a lot of yellow cards in FM18. Um, so we tweaked it off in the end and it seemed to work. We had been more expressive on. Again, that was really for the more attacking players to get them thinking, to get the overlap, to have uh, Lacazette working out wide, to have the shadow striker pushing forward or dropping back, and to have those two wingers getting in, getting in the middle, as well as putting the balls in the back of the net. We had passing the space on um, and passing directness of mixed. So we wanted to play some short balls, but also when we were countering and when we are going for that attack, we wanted to attack quickly. Passing the space lets you do that, puts the ball into space for your wingers or your front men to run onto. And then playing out of defence means that you don't give away the ball. You build it up from the back. You win the ball back. Your defenders are giving it to your midfielders and then your midfielders will take it from there. And then exploiting the left and right flank because... As in that tactic, Lundberg and Perez were bombing forward, either putting balls in or they were on the end of balls from each other's play. So using the wings as your outlet, the midfield would funnel it out and then the out would funnel it back in. So that's kind of the idea we were going for. And work the ball into box then helps finish it off. That The ball's always ending up there and you want one or two or more of your players in that box to put the ball in the back of the net. We also had run at defence on if we're using the wingers and we're looking to push. Mixed, we don't want the route one, we don't want just a hot, like, 
hop the ball forward over the top and then run onto it. And if we don't get that, that's a problem. We want the guys to dribble as well. So if the wide men were picking up the ball, we want them to run. Hit the byline, run for that byline, stick to the edge of the pitch, see where you can get to the end, put the ball in. That will give us more time to get more players into the box. So that was the reason we had run at defence on. We played that for most of the season. We did tr try to put put together an away formation. We This formation did struggle against the bigger teams. Uh, away from home, it was perfect. Away from home, not so good. So we tried to work out a way of keeping that same uh, intensity and memento, but maybe using it as a counter formation, let people drop onto us before attacking. We didn't quite get there in the two seasons on the away formation, um, I have to say, but the, the home formation was very, very good. And like I say, in the away formation, we had it on counter. Still had it on structured, still had most of the, the same uh, team instructions, but just tried to play a little deeper, have people come on to us so we could hit them on the counter. But didn't quite nail it, I would say. The team and the, the players we had here, uh, you can see that we had, we kept most of the team in, I think. We brought in, we actually did well bringing in people on from the transfer list. Uh, so we had uh, Czech staying in goal for in the entire season. We did need another goalie, really, but never got around to buying one. Um, we brought in, this isn't the first team, we brought in Mendy and who do we have? Let me put the first team players in. There we go. So this is the team we, we would have finished the second season with. So we brought in Tierney at left back um, to replace the outgoing Kolasniak. He did very well in the first season, but then was wanted and we sold him. And uh, we brought in Chris Smalling to partner Koscielny in the middle to give that defensive uh, like stability. Uh, Mustafi was very good first season for us as well. Bellerin stayed as the right back, the main right back for the team. Uh, in the middle, we replaced everyone in here. We brought in Savic, uh, who's amazing. Sergi Savic. Uh, top buy in FM, probably the best box-to-box -box midfield on the game. The man loves scoring. He got 17 goals in the last season. And playing alongside him, we had a deep line playmaker on support. So we had Andre Gomes in there. We also had Ander Herrera for the first season, did a very good job in that role. Very, very solid. But we tried many options in that midfield role. We also had Ramsey that stuck around. Stuaro we brought in as well. He stuck around for a bit. And Coughlin also jumped in there as well. But Herrera and Savic were probably the mainstay for the second season. And then as we come into the attacking a lot, we had inside forwards and, and wingers. So we had Ryan uh, Reese Nelson. I said Ryan Nelson. Reese Nelson out on the left or Awobi out on the left. Nelson was spectacular. Second season really came out of his shell. Great, uh, great prospect on FM18. Awobi as well. Amazing, amazing player. Just suffered with a few injuries. Uh, we had Walcott out on the right. Walcott was immense. Four assist making as a winger. Top, top player. Kept thinking about getting rid of him, but he was on fire. I think he had top assist maker both seasons. Uh, and then through the middle, we've said Lacazette up top. And we had a, uh, Ertzil first season. And then a mix of Ertzil or Isco. Playing in that shadow striker role. Probably could have done with a much a better shadow striker in that role. Maybe a second striker. Rather than relying on an attacking midfielder to do that job. Because you need him to contribute to the goals as well. They, are, uh, they need to be able to score. They need to be able to get on the end of the ball and score, as well as when required, be that attacking outlet, that creative outlet in the middle of the pitch. Um, but they did well. And then, yeah, like I say, up top we had Lacazette. We had Batshuari coming in from Chelsea. He did quite well as well. And obviously Giroud coming on to add a different uh, aspect to that role. But like I say, you're trying to create the Henri role. So someone who has the creative freedom to put in the ball and to sort of drag people out of position, as well as score from wherever he wants in that final third. So that's the team we ran with. If we were to look at the show, oh no, let's have a look before I move on. I forgot to go through the individual instructions, didn't I? Apologies. So, goalkeeping instructions, we had distribute to fullbacks, part of that playing out from the back. We wanted the goalie to play it short. Fullbacks and across the middle, uh, we had hold position on. We did have one defender on a stopper roll. Uh, the idea there, that the, the line is held and then if they get to the final point, there's one defender that's going to step out and try and take that guy on. Uh, Koscielny played that role for us. And it did quite well. For, it did quite well. We didn't get a lot of offside. Uh, but that, that you saw the defence. They moved as one. They definitely defended as a line. And then if the guy, we managed to force him to cut inside, they weren't going to go wide. Koscielny was there just to take him out. For the midfield two, we had closed down more and closed down much more on the box-to-box -box and deep line playmaker to try and... If they got past the front guys, that this was the first line of defence. So we need you need good support and good rotation for these guys because they're going to get tired. They're going to get real tired because they do a lot of running in the games. For the wide men, we left them as they were, but on attack, so they're going forward. 
Um, the Shadow Striker, we did have on close down more as well for some games. Maybe not on the attacking because we weren't ready to go forward. And Advance Forward, we had on close down more as well. So he's putting pressure on the defence. Hoping that they're going to pump long balls. Because long balls, our defence is going to pick them up and win them all day. So having these front guys on close down more will put pressure on that defensive line. Force them into longer balls. Which hopefully your defence can just easily clear up. You can walk away with the ball then. So that's the tactic. That's how we played there. If we have a look at the schedule. So in the second season, we did win the Community Shield. The, um, what is it called? The EFL, uh, the FA Cup Final. FA Cup final, we won the FA Cup and we won the EFL Cup as well. So we got some big results in there. And if you just have a scan over the scores of some of these games, we were scoring big amounts of goals. So four goals there, four goals, three goals, five goals, four goals, five, four, five. So we, this is a tactic and have a two fives there, fives. When it plays well and you're against the right team, you will score lots and lots of goals. Uh, when you play against the big teams, you'll also find you get you struggle a little bit. So United beat us 4-0. Chelsea beat us 3-0. Chelsea beat us, I think, 6-0 here. Second leg. Um, so we didn't lose a lot of games in the season. But when we did get beaten, we got thrashed. But as you can see, for most of the green dots for most of that season, absolutely spectacular. First season, we struggled to get players in. Um, but again, we still were scoring goals for fun. Six goals, five goals, six, four, four. Four, it's just like five goals. It was just the big games we bottled it. And Liverpool, we lost 5-0. We lost against United in the EFL Cup. Um, we lost against Norwich in the EFL Cup. Fourth round, that was an odd one. I lost to, yeah, just losing like stupid games, really. I mean, we got through that one in the end. But yeah, lost it on away goals to Colm. It wasn't, we didn't quite have the players to fill out the roles perfectly. Uh, so the first team was a bit of a, bit of a, a learning curve. And the second season was when we really came into our own and absolutely dominated. So this tactic will get you goals. That that front four attacking force is um, is, is outstanding. And you've got, if you get a good wing on the right and a good inside forward on the left, oh, or the other way around, it doesn't really matter. They will score lots and lots of goals for you. Um, yeah. Attackingly, perfect. And defensively, the defensive line works really well. Uh, you need to make sure you've got a good box-to-box -box midfielder. Whether the second role is a deep line playmaker or you throw it into something else, maybe a ball-winning midfielder, um, just to help on the defensive roles. Maybe you drop them back. I'm, I'm, I was a bit reluctant to drop a defensive midfielder in there because you're pushing your uh, defensive line so high that you don't want those two to clash. And you also don't want to have five defenders sometimes. But there's some work to do there. You can download the tactic. It will be on the Steam Workshop and have a tweak yourself. Let me know how you get on. But what we will do just before I leave for that one and let you go and try and in, uh, create the Invincible season yourself is show you some of the game time. So let me pick a couple of games and I'll be back to show you just in the match engine how the tactic worked. So this is the FA Cup final where we beat Man United 4-1. So we'll just walk you through the play and how some of the goals built up uh, and how the, the tactic works in the match engine. So we went with just our normal attacking um, tactic for this match. And it's a hard four match until we uh, stormed out, just scored everything we touched. So this is the first goal here. Savage has got the ball back. He's played from the defenders. He's played it into Walcott. And as you can see, We've got our spearhead here and we've got our three attackers making their way forward whilst these two just keep an eye on what's going on defender-wise. So Walcott picks up the ball here and his first instinct is to run for the wing, hit that byline and put a ball inside. That's what he does. He runs down the line and he wants to cross and he wants to get an assist. And as you can see, we've got players busting the gut to get in here. So you've got your front, you've got a Wobi, or sorry, Nelson dropping in as an inside forward on the back post. You've got Lacazette as your main threat in the middle. And then you've got Sergi Savic, your box-to-box -box midfielder, and your shadow striker also dodging in there. Your deep line playmaker is going to end up on the edge of the box in case it comes out. So we've got here, throws it inside. You've got three people. He's gone to the back post. Reed Nelson there. Easy goal at the back post. 1-0 up against Man United. We can't really complain. If we're looking defensively, this is how the, the defenders pull together here. Smalling came forward to try and close down the play. Pulled himself out of line. But as you can see, shots his bust a gut, sorry, to get back to hold that line. You've then got Martial who's got it out on the left. And you've got your right back. Bellerin's going in to close. These guys are trying to keep the line as much as possible. Try and force an offside if they can. Once it gets to this point, you know you're in trouble. Essentially, crossing in is, is OP in FM18. 
uh, and you know that you you're gonna you're gonna be in trouble wherever, wherever you are. And uh, Andre Silva gets the goal there. Defensively, they were there. The defenders were there. They should have been marking. They could have maybe got in the tackle on Andre Silva, but didn't. But as you can see there, that's how the defensive line works. And I think we'll um, we'll show some more of the defensive line in the second game. Okay, f third goal here. So one of the goals was a uh, a free kick or a corner. So we'll leave that one out. But Savage has got the ball here. He's playing into game. And you've got all your four players in front of him. You've got the wing backs just showing that they're, they're ready. They're not going to run too far forward because they're not on attack. But they're here in case they're required. Gomes here, back into Savage. He finds Walcott. Walcott is doing the same thing he's done again. Thinking about getting that ball inside where he's got three men to aim for. It comes out. Gomes is ready on the edge of the box. He fires that in the top corner. But that's what we're trying to do every time is get that ball into the box. Have your two, your box to box and your deep line playmaker sitting in this area in case it gets cleared and you're ready to roll. Whilst you've still got four defenders back in case anything goes wrong. Again here playing out from the back. Chambers into Walcott. Walcott's going to think about beating his man, hitting the line. Skips over the tackle here, runs to the byline and then the beautiful front post goals. Into Batshuari. This time instead of going back post he's gone front post and there we go we get another goal. As you can see, Walcott was just outstanding in this uh, in this save. He just beat his men for days. Absolutely loved it. So let me pick another game where we can show you a bit more of the defensive uh, side as well. Right, so here we are. We've just lost the ball. This is the EFL Cup final against Tottenham. We've just lost the ball. It's been pumped forward to Deli Alley. So this is about seeing how the defenders run. So here you go. You've got your strong line at the back. You got your two men in the middle who should be now doing busting the gut to do as much of the closing down as possible. So you can see they're getting into Kane. Kane puts it out wide to Trippier. You want this line maybe to be a bit tighter. But your left back goes out to close down. Your defenders are then there. Cool. Smalling's made the first attempt. He's cleared there. The, the line's done its job. It's now for the midfield to pick up. They've nodded it on. And away we go again. Obviously, we didn't win that one. So they're going to come back at us again. Ericsson this time into Deli Alley. Again, the midfield two busting their gut to close down. Now it's at the, the key point. The defenders are now going to have to step forward. This is where you want your stopper. As you can see, Koscielny starting to do. Someone's got to make a tackle somewhere. Koscielny here steps forward inside Kane. Puts his foot on the ball and puts it away. There's a danger with the stopper that he steps out. Lets the guy in. But if you've got a good defender, a good stopper. With uh, intelligent, uh, good determination, not good determination, good decision making. Um, then they'll make the right decision. Out to his Isco. And away we go then. Able to attack into Walcott who's doing what he always does. Hits the line. Puts it inside. And like I said, just heads over. Okay, and here we have one of the goals. So we have a corner, it gets cleared. And just to show you how the shadow striker was working. So Savage puts it back out to Bellerin. He's going to put the ball inside. Walcott, doing what he does, puts it inside. You've again got three men in this box. Every time, three men to aim for when you're crossing in from the left or the right. Lacazette here, nods down to Isco, who's waiting for it, and we get the goal. But again, just showing that they, you this formation is very good attacking-wise. You always have a lot of people in the box waiting for that cross. Tierney now on the ball. Again, another highlight. This time he's come a bit further forward. He's into Nelson. Now Nelson, again, he's got three men to aim for in the box. Coming in from the left this time. He's got his left back there if need be. Again, you can see that Bellerin's not coming too far forward. Not over committing himself. And you've got your two central midfielders sitting on the edge of the box in case this needs to pop out. Tierney gets tackled. Uh, Nelson gets tackled. We're straight in attacking. And we actually get a goal from a mistake there. So thanks to those two um, central midfielders, we put pressure on Ericsson. Who makes a mistake in a back pass. Let's Lacazette in. He puts the ball away. We get the goal. We win the cup. Great pressure and attacking play in that top half. Whilst also remaining defensively solid. And I personally like, you know, getting to show two victories. Two cup victories against two rivals. And also finishing a video with goals against Spurs. So, I mean. That's brilliant. And what a way to finish the video. But like I said, that tactic is available on the Steam Workshop. If you go to the Steam Workshop, there should be a link down below in the description. Search for Big Herb the Nerd. You'll be able to download it and play it for yourself. Feel free to download, tweak, and play to your heart's content. Try it with different teams, and then come and comment. Let me know how you get on with this tactic. There are also other tactic series on. We've done the Gagan pressing tactic, and we've done the Tiki Taka style. Both of the in these type videos where we explain a bit about the formation and how we've built it. They're all on the Steam Workshop as well, and they also are all accompanied by two season saves on the channel as well. If you want to see the full the full season, see how we played in each game. If you don't believe I got these results, well, they're all recorded on camera on YouTube. So get over and check those out as well. But I will leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy this tactic as much as I have the highs and lows. And if you fix that away formation, 
you be sure to let me know. If you are new, please do subscribe as well. And I will see you next time for some more FM action. Have a good evening. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.